My name is Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Until recently, romantic couples formed around promises of emotional exclusivity and sexual fidelity, uniqueness in each other's minds and lives, and, more common until the 1940s, virginity. Marriage was also a partnership, economic or related to child rearing, or to companionship. Marriage was based on the partner's past and background, and geared towards a shared future. Nowadays, things have changed. Couples coalesce around the twin undertaking of continuity, I will always be there for you, and availability, I will always be there for you. Issues of exclusivity, uniqueness, and virginity have been relegated to the back burner. It is no longer practical to demand of one's spouse to have nothing to do with the opposite sex, or not to spend the bulk of his or her time outside the marriage, not to take separate vacations, and more generally to be joined at the hip. Affairs, for instance, both emotional and sexual, are said certainties in the life of virtually every couple. So, members of the couple are supposed to make themselves continuously available to each other, and to provide emotional sustenance and support in an atmosphere of sharing, companionship, and friendship. All the traditional functions of the family can now be, and often are, outsourced, and that includes even sex or emotional intimacy. But contrary to marriage, outsourcing is frequently a hazard and unpredictable, dependent as it is on outsiders who are committed elsewhere as well. And Hence, the relative durability of the institution of marriage, either in its conservative uh, or in its, its less conventional forms. Marriage is simply a convenient and highly practicable arrangement. What about divorce? Divorce and other forms of marital breakup are not new phenomena, but their precipitants have, have undergone a revolutionary shift. In the past, families also fell apart. But they fell apart owing to a breach of exclusivity, mainly in the forms of emotion, or sexual adultery, or infidelity. They fell apart because of a deficiency of uniqueness and privacy. Divorced women, for instance, were considered damaged goods because they used to belong to another man, and therefore could, could offer neither privacy nor uniqueness. Or they fell apart because of, of an egregious violation of the terms of partnership, for example, sloth, or dysfunctional child-rearing, or even infertility. Nowadays, intimate partners bail out for different reasons. They bail out when the continuous availability of their significant others is disrupted, sexually, emotionally, or as friends and companions. Marriages are about the present, and are being put to the test on a daily basis. Partners who are dissatisfied opt out and team up with other, more promising providers. Children are serially reared by multiple parents and in multiple households. And so the ancient institution of monogamous marriage is ill-suited to the exigencies of modern Western civilization. People of both genders live and work longer, which renders monogamy impracticable. They travel far, they travel away frequently. They are exposed to thousands of tempting romantic alternatives via social networking, the workplace. But the roots of the crumbling alliance between men and women go deeper and further in time. Long before divorce became a social norm, men and women became two disparate, incompatible, and warring subspecies. The 20th century was a monument to male fatuity. Wars and ideologies almost decimated the species. Forced to acquire masculine skills and fill men's shoes in factories and fields, women discovered militant self-autonomy, the superfluousness of men, and the untenability of the male claims to superiority over them. As males almost destroyed the world, women discovered themselves. In an age of malignant individualism, bordering on narcissism, men and women alike put themselves, their fantasies, and their needs first. All else 
family included, began. And with five decades of uninterrupted prosperity, birth control, and feminism, women's league, most of the female denizens of the West have acquired the financial wherewithal to realize their dreams at the expense and to the detriment of collectives that they ostensibly belong to, such as the nuclear family. Feminism is a movement focused on negatives, on obliterating women's age-old bondage, but it offers few constructive ideas regarding women's new roles. By casting men as the enemy, feminism also failed to educate men and to convert them into useful allies. Owing to the dramatic doubling of life expectancy, modern marriages seem to go through three phases. Infatuation, the honeymoon phase, procreation and accumulation of assets, of children, of shared experiences, and then exhaustion outsourcing, bonding with new emotional and sexual partners for rejuvenation or for the fulfillment of long repressed fantasies, needs and wishes. Divorces and breakups occur mostly at the seams. The periods of transition between these phases, and especially between the stages of accumulation procreation and exhaustion outsourcing. And this is where family units almost invariably, and one could say inevitably, break down. 